And now it's time to save the data in the database. So whatever operation we were doing, like creating, updating, uh, deleting, and reading, this should be done through the database. Now database, you can use anything which you want. Maybe a CSV file, you can use a NoSQL databases, or you can use RDBMS. And here we are going to use the RDBMS. Now you have multiple options to work with. You can use MySQL, you can use Postgres, you can use Oracle, whatever you prefer. Now I'm going to use Postgres, but because it's one of the best advanced open source uh, tool, that's what they say. So if you go to Postgres, this is what they say, the world most advanced open source relational database. But of course there are other options as well, whichever you prefer will work. Now, question arise, how will we are going to do this? Now, whenever you work with fast API, one of the recommended way is to go with SQL Alchemy. But why we need to use SQL Alchemy here? Now, SQL Alchemy is your Python SQL toolkit. That's good. There are other options as well. But it also provides you something called a object relational mapper. Now, why this is important? See, if you go back to our code, which we have done, we basically have a class, right? A class like this, where you have a product, and then you got certain fields there. Now let's say if you want to create a database and if you want to create a table. Now if I ask you, hey, you got this particular class here and I want you to create a table for it. Now in your mind, actually you can do the mapping, right? You can say, okay, I got a class which is product. Let me create a table called product. I got these fields like ID, name, description, price, quantity. I can create the table with those columns like ID, name, description, price, and quantity. As simple as that, right? So, and then you got the table name, you got column names, but you also got the column type because in the class also, when you define those properties, you mention, hey, that's an ID, which is integer. So here also we can say integer. Now, based on what DBMS you are working with, uh, the name will change from numbers to integer. So here we can have string or varchar or text and list goes on. So the type defined in the class will be defined for the table as well. But you will say, okay, Mapping is done, but what about the data? What about the row data? So each row will represent one object. So let's say we have created four products, right? That was in the list. Now each product here is the object of a product class. Now that object goes to database and becomes a row. So what we are trying to do here is we are trying to connect the object and the relations, which is tables, and we are doing a mapping for it. And that's what we call ORM. Now you will say, what's the benefit of it? You know, this looks fancy, but why do we use it? So when you work with databases, like let's say Postgres or MySQL, and if you have a language like Python, and whenever you want to save data, basically what you will do is, you will take the object, and this object will have the values. Now you will write the SQL query. So let's say if you want to create a new record in the database. So you will write the SQL query, which is insert. So you will say insert into product, then you will say values, and in bracket, you will mention the values, right? Now, from where you will get these values? From the object. Then manually, you have to pick up the value from the object, put it there. Pick up the value, put it there. So you have to create that query as a developer. So that's for the insert. What about, let's say, if you want to fetch? Then you will write the query, which is select star, or based on what columns you want to fetch, based on how many rows you want to fetch, you will write the query in that format. What if you want to update for everything you got queries and you have to write those queries. Now you will say, okay, I know how to work with queries. But the question is, do you want to really write that in the Python code? What if someone else can do it for you? So they will say, let me give you a tool, use this and let me take care of creating all the queries for you. You just say, if you want to insert, you just say add. If you just want, if you want to fetch, Maybe you can say get whatever method is. So basically you can use those methods or functions and this will do the things for you. Cool, right? And that's why we are going to use SQL Alchemy. Then the question is, how do you get this in your project? Now, if you head back to your project here, okay, let me stop the server because we are going to make some changes now. If I check PIP list, nowhere you will find SQL Alchemy. You will get Pydentic by default, but nowhere we got SQL Alchemy. Right, we need to get that. Apart from it, we also need to get the driver for Postgres. Now, based on what DBMS you're working with, so if you're working with MySQL, you need a MySQL driver. If you're working with Postgres, you need a Postgres driver. And we need to do things in this project, SQL Alchemy and the driver for, for Postgres. So let's install it. So I will say PIP install. So we need SQL Alchemy 
and we also need the driver which is PSY COP G2. I don't know why they went for this weird name uh, because this is PG makes sense, Postgres and uh, Psycho. If anyone knows this, let me know in the comments. I've never not explored it why they have this weird name. Uh, for see, for MySQL, it's a very simple MySQL connector for Python. Perfectly makes sense, right? But I don't know why they went for this name. But this is a driver for Postgres and this is your SQL Alchemy. And you have to also make sure, and before you work with Postgres, you have to also make sure that you have Postgres in your machine. If you don't have it, click on download. It will download the Postgres for you based on which OS you're working with. I'm using Windows. And these are the version. I think in my machine I got 17 or 16, doesn't matter, because the last update was in 2022. So that is 17.6. Uh, they are releasing the beta. 18 beta is released, that's great. Uh, if you want to use beta, you can try it out, but if you're new to the development world, stick to the stable versions. Because if something goes wrong, you will always blame the system because it's in beta. Maybe it's your mistake. Now, when it's, once you get experience, once you have worked on multiple projects, and if, you, if something goes wrong, you can still blame it, but at least you will know. Are you really responsible for it? Anyway, so you will get this download. Now, Make sure that when you get this, you also get PG admin. Now, if you don't have PG admin in your machine, uh, or if you don't get this by default, search for PG admin somewhere and you should be able to get it. I think you will get that by default, PG admin. This should be a tick mark. Now, how the PG admin looks like, so this is how the PG admin, I'm just opening it now, looks like, bit heavy to start with. In fact, earlier, PG admin three was very heavy. Four, they have changed the interface to make it lightweight. But since it's connected with the Postgres service, which is running behind the scene, uh, it takes time. So by the time it is opening, let me just go back to our code and let's install this. So this should take some time. Now, since I already had this in my system, it will be faster. Yeah, it's, it was fast. And now if I check PIP list, there should be SQL Alchemy and there should be the driver. Perfect. Now, once you got these two things, we can get started and work with the database, okay? But I also want to show you the PG admin. This is how it looks like. Uh, I should zoom it a bit. Okay, so this is PG admin, and by default, I think you have to add the server by specifying the username password. Username by default will be Postgres. The password you have to set when you're installing it. And I forgot what is my password for this particular PG admin, but we'll figure it out because I use different machines for uh, project and for recording, and I always mess up the names. Okay, so we'll use this. We'll try to save our data in the Postgres database. And if you're using MySQL, the only thing you have to change is, uh, in fact, you have to change two things. One is the driver, and second, some lines in the database connection. That's it, and it will work. How that works, let's see that in the next video.